Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here with Man Plus. Now I'm going to give you the latest update on what's going on with this potential October Arctic blast and major snowstorm coming across the U.S. That way you know exactly what to expect. So remember, if you've never been here before, links are always in the description below. That way it can save you time. Make sure you subscribe. It is very important that you click on that bell and select all. Otherwise, you'll only get maybe one video a week. That's about how YouTube does. But make sure you get the updates. Make sure you click the bell and select all. Now, you can also see the difference in our temperatures. Next 6, 10 day temperature outlook. You're still going to be above average over here while this cool air moves in. Then when you go a little bit further towards the end of October, the very beginning of November, the cool air is going to continue to come further to the south and to the east. Plus, you have all the precipitation that has changed. Look at this. Well above average precipitation in this region. This means you have the best chances for rainfall next 6 to 10 days. And it is moving further to the east after that. So there's a lot of updates I want to go over with you real quick. Now let's get into your information. Now we have dramatic changes. You can see the latest update on EPO, the East Pacific Oscillation. Your jet stream on the West Coast is going to keep on dipping into the 23rd. Then it's going to dip even further still towards the end of the month. This is cooler air coming in and riding our jet stream to the east. But you can see the latest update on our AO, our Arctic Oscillation. This is very important. This is where cold air comes further into our country. And you can see the update all the way from the 20th all the way to the end of the month. We have the cool air coming in, but it's not going as deep as it did before, which wasn't deep at all. So it is going to be a northern issue with all these freezing temperatures, this Arctic blast, and this potential major snowstorm. And you can see this when you look at your latest information according to the euro. That as you go towards the 2030, you start getting that deep trough building in on the west coast as it goes all the way into the 20s with a very deep trough of systems coming in. You can see how the storm system comes all the way in and then sucks all that moisture coming from Hurricane Major, Hurricane Norma, all into the U.S., with some winds aloft as well. And this is gonna bring y'all some thunderstorms. But when you look at your lower level winds, you can see as you have normal coming into this transition, as we still have this high pressure, still spinning over here, bringing all this tropical moisture into our jet stream. We still get some winds coming in. We still get some thunderstorms built up. But you can see that it goes on a higher ridge all the way towards Canada. So Michigan, you could get on some high winds as we go through this transition, then maybe the intercoastal northeast a little bit, but then it goes through Ohio Valley and it goes into Canada, strengthening up with all the lower level winds. So there's not going to be no big severe weather outbreak. There's a there is some dew points, there is a little bit of lift, a little bit of cape in the atmosphere, but there's not a big chance for a lot of severe weather. This is just going to transition, and you can see with your precipitate water, that's going to be a steady flow of moisture going into that region as we go towards the end of October. Now this over here, this is a upper level low. We're still not sure if that's doing anything. That's the latest run with the Euro. It is the end of the run. And you can also see back here that we do have Tropical Storm Tammy that is strengthening up at the last minute towards the Leeward Islands. And it is becoming Hurricane Tammy as it goes out into the Atlantic. Still showing that it is going to be east side loaded. Still showing minimal impacts, maybe two plus inches of rainfall looks like your biggest impacts. But as we go through this transition, you can see that the cooler temperatures are coming in. This is your lower level temperatures. And this is according to the Euro. The Euro shows it as it goes from the 23rd all the way towards the end of October. It stays really to the northern half all the way until you get towards the end of October. Then those freezing temperatures will come in through the upper Midwest and maybe a little bit of the northeast not hitting a lot. Most of the Rocky Mountains is going to be getting a lot of those temperatures, and a lot of these temperatures are going to stay in the upper Midwest, not going far at all. But GFS is still showing that you have that big troughing coming in all the way with this storm for the weekend. Euro shows as well is bringing some freezing temperatures to the northeast. But as you go through this transition with this October storm, you see how the freezing temperatures stays in the upper Midwest all the way till you get towards the 10 days. From here on out, we, it's still changing. There's just dramatic changes this morning. So it's still showing, according to the GFS, that we still have all these freezing temperatures still coming along, and it is still going to be making this major snowstorm. We definitely will know more as we get closer with National Weather Service and with what the Euro sees. But just starting this morning, we have Norma, and Norma is a beast this morning. 
just circling around, getting real strong, a lot of convection. Look at the nice center that, that she has. That is a big, strong system, definitely a hurricane. It definitely went on a rapid intensification. But you also can see it expected to be from a major hurricane to a Cat 4 hurricane and go down to a Cat 2, then a Cat 1 by Sunday. Still don't know which direction it's going. Like I said, Euro showing it going this way, then coming in. They still don't know. So far, showing it will weaken down and bring some mild impacts towards Mexico. Matter of fact, the latest information from National Hurricane Center is Major Hurricane Norma will remain a major hurricane, but will go down quickly to a tropical storm by 6 a.m. on Sunday. There is hurricane watches in this pink right here, and it will go down to a tropical depression as it goes by y'all on Tuesday morning. Once again, a discrepancy on how much rainfall y'all going to get. Remember, this link is in the description below as well as the next one I'm about to show you. It is a zoomable link. Euro showing all the heavy rainfall going towards Cabo San Lucas. GFS still showing it will go in towards Mexico. National Hurricane Center does have it going in here as a tropical depression. Could be one to two inches. But you can zoom all the way into your area with that link and see what you are expected to get. And the wind gust is there as well. So you see maybe some high 40s towards Cabo San Lucas with the Euro, according to what's going on with Hurricane Norma. GFS is still taking the 40s towards Cabo San Lucas, but it's still taking more inland, all the way to 50, maybe even some 60 miles per hour wind gusts that does hit y'all and affect y'all. So remember, you can zoom in with this link. Link in the description, please use it. Plus the latest on what's going on with Tropical Storm Tammy. They have Tropical Storm warnings out. They have hurricane watches out over here for the blue and this pink. They have Tropical Storm watches out in all this yellow. You see how it's expected to become a hurricane as it intensifies and goes out through the northeast. Still showing possible impacts. Now I'll see more Tropical Storm impacts as we get closer to the event. But so far you can see right here in this blue ring for Hurricane Norma. This is your chance for getting Tropical Storm force winds in this blue at least 39 miles per hour sustained winds. And you have over here for Tammy what's going on on the islands towards the Eastern Caribbean. If you're in the islands that's in any of this blue, you're expected to get at least tropical storm force winds out of this. And there is some chances for over here towards St. John's for y'all to get maybe some hurricane winds out of this as well. So just be aware of that. But I also have this link for y'all down in the description. You can see with the Euro that you might get two or three inches of rainfall out of that. And GFS is in agreement as well. So they're both in agreement that these top islands in the northern leeward will be the most hit by the rainfall and maybe some winds. I'm not showing the winds super strong, but you are going to get one to three inches of rainfall coming out of this storm. The winds are still showing weak like yesterday. High 30 miles per hour wind gusts possibly with the Euro. You see what GFS is showing about the same thing, just a little bit further away. But once again, these are zoomable links in the description. Make sure you use them to see what your potential impacts will be. Now you also can see the latest updates. Chance for very cold temperatures from the 26th through the 1st of November, that from the 26th through the 29th in all of this blue region. And this is right where your snowfall is being seen. And you can see that here. You have a risk for heavy snow from the 26th through the 1st of November in all of this purple region, all the way to Wisconsin, Iowa, all the way to Nebraska, all the way down to New Mexico, Colorado, getting all the way towards Idaho. This whole area has a chance for heavy snowfall from the 26th through the 27th as this transition with this storm happens. So far, still showing it is all over the place. I will show you what I found in the ensembles. This is according to the Euro, showing it still will be too much warm temperatures. And you get one to two inches in all this gray, maybe two to five in that blue. And when you check to see other models, see what could go on with the trend, you can see with the Canadian, it's not showing a lot for the higher elevations, which don't make sense. That's usually who would get hit first. And then it shows some for the upper Midwest, and then a little bit for the intercoastal Northeast. GFS has been all over the place. It sees all this heavy snowfall, but it's still showing a good chance all the way from Colorado, all the way for through Nebraska, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Y'all could get a good heavy strip all the way from Montana, Idaho. A lot of heavy snowfall. You look at another run, it shows kind of like the Canadian showed. Not really much up here, upper Midwest, and it'll be over the northern Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and the intercoastal northeast. Like the cool temperatures are coming down late in the dip. 
but it changes again, guys. Now it's showing barely any at all, and everything's northern. This is only within the next 10 days. 10 days always change. You go past this, you're going to see more storms. It's hard to even forecast just one, nevertheless, going further. But look at the dramatic changes. So to try and get a better idea of what's going on, we look at the control member with the Ural. This is a more than likely outcome that for the next 10 days, you will get some major snowfall in the higher elevations. It'll be anywhere from one to three, one to four inches for the upper Midwest as this snowstorm comes in. Then as it transforms over to the Northeast, as we go through the beginning of November, another chance for a deep dip coming in, maybe even one to two inches of snowfall for the panhandle of Texas, while everybody else in upper middle Midwest starts getting heavy snowfall going across Michigan and the intercoastal Northeast. Even when you look at all the ensemble members of the GFS, you can see all the potential outcomes for the next 10 days with this snowfall. Now, this is little model runs that you could see in the model data as it comes out. But what you want to pay attention to is this one. This is your control member, just like I showed you with the URL just now. Your more than likely outcome is that it will come in a little heavy, but little light. And there will be a second dip from the 26th through the 27th and 28th just like what National Weather Service has out for your chance for heavy snowfall. All the way from New Mexico, Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Northern Minnesota, Iowa, Southern Minnesota, Northern Wisconsin seems to be where the heaviest snowfall will be on this transition. Now you can see this in six days as this storm starts transitioning through the Central Plains, going through the upper Midwest by the time you get to Thursday. That cool air coming down on a wraparound will bring snowfall all the way from Montana, Wyoming, into Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, and going into Iowa as well. Not as heavy for Iowa. It mostly looks like it's going to be a northern Wisconsin, a Minnesota, a Iowa a little bit. South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, and Montana snowstorm. That's what it's looking like in this control member. So seeing what you can look forward to when these cold temperatures come down from this Arctic blast, you can see here with the Euro, as you go through the 27th, you start getting those teen temperatures and the 20s passing through the upper Midwest and the Rocky Mountains. Also bringing a nasty wind chill still with it all the way through the upper Midwest. Now you're starting to feel like teen temperatures to maybe single digits starting to come in through the higher elevations as you go through saturday on the 28th it's only going to be the northern tier of the upper midwest that's going to stay in these 20s as these cool temperatures come down but your wind chills are still going to be there and it's still going to be feeling like single digits to teen temperatures maybe even some 20s getting in there it will be cold especially with the wind chill now when you go through sunday on the 29th this is where the cold air starts dipping down a little bit further. Now, a lot of people are going to be in the 20s. And with the wind chills, it's going to feel all the way across the Ohio Valley, intercoastal northeast. A lot of people are going to feel like they're in freezing conditions when they're not. But whoever is in freezing conditions will be in the high teens to low 20s with your wind chills for Sunday the 29th. Now, just to show you the latest updates, so far the highest temperatures on the 29th will warm all the way back up where you're still in the 50s in the south. You're going to be in the 40s in the northern tier and the northeast. Now, as you go through Monday on the 30th, all this cold air is going to transform a little bit further to the east. You have it for the upper Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and the northeast. Everybody in these 20 degree temperatures and the wind chills are still going to be nasty. A lot of people feel like they're in the 20s all the way down to the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, maybe even northern Mississippi guys. All the way through North Carolina as you go through the 30th. This is Halloween Eve. I know a lot of y'all celebrate Halloween. I don't, but I'm not going to judge. I just want to make sure you're safe when you go doing whatever it is you do on the daily. Now your highs for Monday on the 30th. We'll be in the 40s still for the northern side. You will be in the 50s towards the southern side and maybe in the 60s along the Gulf Coast. So as you go through the 31st of October, through your Halloween day, you can see all these cold temperatures coming in. Now you have the freezing temperatures for the northeast, and it is bringing those cold wind chills once again. This will be on a Tuesday. But your highs, as you go out through the evening, you will remain the warmest out of all this transition. You will be in the 50s, you will be in the 60s and 70s in the south, but you will remain in the 40s in the northeast and the northwest.
Plus, you can also see here with the euro as we go through that transition, bringing your dew points all the way up as you go through Tuesday afternoon, bringing you some chances for severe weather. So far shown, it will be in the 60s, maybe some 70s along the Gulf Coast as you go through Tuesday and Wednesday. Then as you go through Thursday, this is where the storm moves through the upper Midwest. The cooler temperatures coming in, giving you all that snow on a wraparound. And this is where it moves further to the east as you go through Friday as well. But when you look at your cape, when you look at your lift, you can see there's not a lot of energy for these storms to feed on. There is there from Monday morning, Monday afternoon, going through Tuesday through the upper Midwest. Then as you go all the way through Wednesday, it starts dissipating very strongly. Low pocket going through now. It's about it. Everything stays in the south for Thursday and Friday. Now, one thing to note, SIPS did put down a 10% chance for severe weather as you go through the 25th. And it does move a little bit further over as you go through the 26th. This don't mean the National Weather Service will put out a 10%. When SIPS puts out a 10%, it's a very low chance. It'll be more like a 2 or 5%. But I did check. None of this is going to be for tornadoes, guys. Now, we'll bring you the latest updates, but you can see here all the way down to the bottom one where you get the four to eight day outlook. National Weather Service don't have any severe weather just yet. But still showing with the Euro that as you go through Friday, the storm system is going out through the northeast. As you go through Saturday, it is going to start building up to more heavy rainfall for the northeast, mostly New England side. And as you go through Sunday, it's going to move out through Maine. And then they'll move away. Then you got these cooler temperatures coming in. You got this less precipitation because you got this big high pressure just setting up over here on the east side of the U.S. But now you have your storms coming in for next week as you go through Tuesday evening, through Wednesday, and then as you go through Thursday, bringing some of that severe weather with it as well, not showing it a big event. But as you go through Thursday, you can see that it brings a lot of tight isobars all through the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes as that storm system moves further to the north. So there could be some wind damage could be coming with this as it moves through. I will keep you updated. So far, it's showing just like the control member showed. You're going to have storm systems moving over. Then the cool temperatures are going to come in and bring you all that snowfall after that. Now, there is some good news. You do have some heavy rainfall expected in the northeast. As you get this storm system moving through from the 21st, all the way through the 25th but also for the south central as you get this transition you have a chance for heavy rainfall in all of this green section heavy rainfall coming your way when you take a look with national weather service with weather prediction center you can see all the heavy rainfall coming towards the south central going through the upper midwest you still have some for the northeast but not as heavy as what's coming on this pattern so far weather prediction center has this all one to three inches all the way from southern Kansas going through Oklahoma and Texas as it transitions through Missouri, eastern Nebraska, Iowa, southern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and goes out through Canada. And that's what a lot of these show also. You can see with the Euro, you're getting some for the northeast as you get that storm system this weekend. You get some for the northwest as we get those low troughs. But all the way in Texas and New Mexico, a lot of heavy rainfall going all the way towards Michigan and Wisconsin. You also get some heavy strips going through louisiana and mississippi they need it bad they're in a big drought and tennessee kentucky valley as well and you can see every model try and see what's trending it's trending a lot of heavy in the south but then it trends that it moves further to the east for the northern side of the storm this is a canadian this is a gfs every single one of them is a little bit different now you can also see the latest run with ace triple r you are going to start getting them storms brewing in this afternoon as you go through tomorrow, it's going to start transitioning them storms across the Carolinas, and it's going to start going towards the weekend towards the northeast. Now, we'll update this first thing in the morning when we have a better outlook. That way we know exactly the full path. We can't see the full path for now, and this is going to spin around a little bit longer for the northeast. I want to give you all the best timing I can on these storms. But thank you so much for your time. hope you have a very great day today. Now, before you go on your Thursday, I want to talk to you with Psalm 94, 14 through 19. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help. 
My soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe, you and your family, every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day. Everybody.